Father, we bless your name. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you glory, God. You are so good. You are so good to us. And we acknowledge you as God. We acknowledge you as Lord of our lives. We acknowledge you as the king who sits high upon the throne. You are Lord of all. So, Father, we magnify you now. We magnify you above everything in our lives, God, above everyone, above every circumstance and situation. You be magnified, God. We set our mind and affections on you and on the things of you. And we just take this moment, God, to come as a collective body, God, just to bless your name. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, now speak to us, speak through us as we continue this conversation, God, about these gifts that you have given us, God, and this ministry that you've called us to. Give us understanding, God. Give us hearts that receive. Give us open minds, God, we ask of you. And then, Father, as we enter into worship, Father, we pray, God, that it would be a sweet-smelling savor to your nostrils. <laughs> yes, that your glory would rest in this place. Thank you, Father. We can feel you here already. Thank you, Jesus. We pray that you would find home here today in our gathering, in our worship, in our lives. And we bless you, Father, for all these things and even for the things that we did not say and the things that you're doing, God, that we even know not of even now. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. a moment. <laughs> He's a wonderful God. He's a wonderful God. Uh, let me say this. Let me say this. Um, as we continue the discussion, we're going to go in our time of worship in a little bit. Give me the clock there if you can, Delton, so we can keep an eye on that. You know, Saturday nights is the only nights I'm concerned about time. <laughs> That's the literally the only night. Uh, any other night, man, I'd be on till nothing o'clock in the morning. Saturday night, show me the clock. Show me the clock. <laughs> so glad that you came out. You came out. Those of you that came out early, I know there are some others that are going to join us as the night progresses. Um, but for us to continue this conversation, it's amazing when you, when you look at the Garden of Eden the garden of delight the garden of his presence in the garden is the only place that we see presence all through scripture and there is no act of worship now, isn't that amazing the place of ultimate presence the only high you get to presence than the garden of Eden is heaven itself and in this place where there's this perpetual presence, there is no shouting, no God, I bless you, no God, I honor you, no God, I lift you up. What's up with that? Because we can't fathom as believers in 21st century saying that you are in God's presence, that you're honoring God without the act of worship. 
And God has been ministering to me that the act of worship, no matter how it looks, is not the highest form of worship. That there's a presence, there's a perpetual presence, because the, the, the presence that Adam experienced was perpetual, meaning that it, it was there. Noel Jones say it ran into perpetuity. <laughs> it, it did not end. It had no end. It kept on going, kept on going. How was this possible? What in the world may, caused it to be a sustained presence like this as it was in the Garden of Eden? And God says, this deeper than your hallelujah, your God, I bless you, your even deeper than your clean life, deeper than being sanctified, deeper than being prayed up. All those things are the things that we consider as the height of our Christian experience. It's deeper than your devotion time. It's deeper than your knowledge of Scripture. God says there's a higher level than that. But no matter what that is, I thought that's it. Worship, prayer, praise, Scripture, that's the life of the believer. He says, no, the highest form of worship is what we saw in the Garden, in the Garden of Eden, and it was obedience. There is a presence that comes from obedience that trumps the presence that comes from worship. <laughs> the presence that we experience from our times of worship ends. The presence that you experience from walking in obedience goes with you wherever you go. It's a perpetual presence. What Adam and Eve had was the fact that they were walking in obedience to God and that was broken when they disobeyed. And as long as they stayed in obedience, there was perpetual presence. And so I say to every worshiper, every worship leader, if you are not living in obedience to the will of God, your, your, your experience in worship is limited. You can flow in perpetual presence when you know you're walking in the purpose that God has for your life, in the will that God has for you. And it is from that place that you could be on the line, in the bank, and right there, Bashkoto de Bohusia, the presence of God will sit right there. You drive it in your, because you're walking in this place of obedience. You're not trying to conjure up a presence, but the presence is actually walking with you. That, that um, you see Luke 18 manifest where he says that we ought to pray without ceasing. You can actually live in that place where you pray without ceasing because you have such obedience with God and there's such a, a synergy between you and God. Watch this. When you get to this place of presence, this is sick right here. We know that God speaks and we say amen, correct? That's what happens. God says something. Um, God has spoken, so let the church say amen. That's a low level. There's a higher place. In the Garden of Eden, there's a place that goes beyond Andre Crouch and Marvin Winans. In the Garden of Eden, Adam spoke, and God said amen. Well, muddle. There is a place that we can be in God where we're such in obedience to the will of God that we will speak it and God will say, Amen. Okay. When you, that's a place right there. Because Adam said, Camel. God said, Amen. Adam says, Rat. God says, Amen. The Bible says, and whatever Adam called them, God says, Amen. So let it be. Good God Almighty. Ain't that a place to live in? And that, that seems to, to, to align with the scripture that says, and we call things that be not. Because we call it, and God says, amen. We say on earth, we don't have to hear heaven. We, we speak to heaven and say healed. And heaven says, amen. We say on earth, delivered. Heaven says, amen. Glory. And so no matter what we do in these sessions and we perfect and we talked about strategy and technique, that right there trumps anything we can do in here. That trumps anything we can do in here. And I believe that this is where God is calling his church. He's calling his church to move beyond church and to move to that place of perpetual walking in God. That's an Enoch kind of living where you just walk with God. Enoch walked with God and God said, man, come, let's keep on walking. And walked himself all the way into glory. And, and I, I believe that if we, this, this is, I'm going to stop talking now. 
you only aspire to what you are exposed to. Your aspiration is limited by your exposure. And this level of thinking will never be the aspiration of the church if we are not exposed to this level of thinking. Most of us, our Christian experience is limited to what we've been exposed to, and we have been exposed to a level, a level of living that is so far beneath what God has called his people to live in. And when you talk like this, people always assume you're talking money. You're talking presence, man. We're talking authority. The ability to say that is bound and it becomes bound. To say that is loose and it becomes loose. The keys that I've given you, says God. That is the place that God, and we need to start hearing it more and more and talk this language more and more. We cannot allow this to seem foreign. This must become standard. There was a time if you said, if you said to somebody 400 years ago that you could confess the Lord as your Savior and be saved that very moment, they would say you lie. 400 years ago, no, sir, no way. Salvation had to come through a process of giving obeisance to the, to the, to the priest and don't get something like that, and after a while you get saved. But they kept on hearing it, kept on hearing it. And now 400 years later, we can tell someone, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God is risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And we know immediately salvation takes place. Why? Because that's what we've been exposed to. We kept on hearing it. Imagine what would happen if we, if we start hearing that the believer can command someone to be healed and the moment he commands it, the person will be healed. If we keep on hearing it, then our children, probably even us, if we keep on hearing it enough, that we will get to a level of faith that we know the authority that we have, that we can speak it and it manifests just like that. Glory to God. Okay, let me leave it right there. That ends our devotion. That was, that was you know, that's a little short talk in devotion. You know, devotion have a little short talk. That's, <laughs> let's give God praise if you receive anything from that just now. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Um, last night, last night, I think one of the highest things that we said last night that I think needs, and I, I got bombarded with this after the session, um, was that whole talk on dishonor and honor. That seemed to strike a chord. And um, I believe some people even left dissatisfied last night because they wanted to hear from us when your church ain't getting with you and when your pastor ain't getting with you, they ain't in flow and they ain't in sync and you better this and that. No, no, no. Um, that's not what we're going to say. We ain't going to tell you that because all of us have been in that environment. All of us have been in an environment when you felt as though you were in this pond all by yourself and nobody's going with you. And so the people ain't ready, and the people in this. When you start accepting that mindset, that's when you start fussing people out. And you don't lead worship. We have to, we, we have to be careful as worship leaders that we walk in honor. We got to walk in honor of our spiritual leadership. This honor will cut the flow of blessings into your life. This honor will shorten the hand of God to move in your life. Not just in church, in your life, full stop. You have to honor leadership. And, and the question, whoever asked, I think it was Johnny who asked the question last night. You have to find it. They have something that they like, you find it. And you honor them in the process because you don't ever want to say, my pastor's slow, pastor, pastor ain't getting it, man. I can move forward. Whenever you jump ahead of leadership, you are in dishonor. If you try to create a, rev if you try to create a culture in the house that is going ahead of leadership and going against leadership, you are in dishonor. Doesn't matter how spiritual it feels. If you are going ahead of the leadership, you are in dishonor. That's why eh, it's so important to know you're in the right house. It's so important to know you are in the right house. You better know that that's where God has for you to be because honor is heavy. Right. Honor ain't no joke. You better know that that man or woman of God is who God has set for you to sit under because if you don't know that, you can have problems and you can end up flowing in dishonor and this, the price is too high to walk in dishonor. That's a heavy price to pay. Because once you connect and say, this is my man of God or this is my woman of God, there, is, there are some things that are required of you that are non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Many of us talk about Jabez, the prayer of Jabez. He says, Lord, enlarge my territory. And we forget the part that says, and, J and Jabez was honored above all his brethren. 
And when you study the word honor there, it says that not only was he honored, but he walked in honor. The key to enlarging your territory and getting your increase is number one, you got to be walking in honor. And if you are not in honor with your spiritual leadership, you are, you are in a very dangerous place and you're going to find yourself in a very dry place because the flow will cut off. The flow will stop. So you must make sure that you are in the right place. You better seek God. You don't just join church because you like the praise team. Don't join church because the choir sound good or because you like that day on TV. Uh-oh. Man, you don't do that. Don't join church out of excitement. You better know that that's what God has for you to be because once you submit and commit to that house, you better pay honor to the man or woman of God that leads the house. And anything short of that is dishonor, and dishonor, God does not approve of dishonor. Does that make sense? All right? So know the house that God has called you to. Choosing, house, choosing, choosing the church is, is close to being as important as choosing a spouse. Real talk. Real talk. Because when you can enter the church, there's a lot of responsibility being enter the church, you know. When you enter a spiritual leader, there's a lot of responsibility. The churches get all up in your life, you know. Churches get all up in your business, all up in everything. Church, when you consider them before you do anything. Church, when you consider them before you pick a school for your children. Church, when you consider them before you get another job. Rev one know that your job ain't taken away from church. Church ain't easy, you know. <laughs> church ain't easy. And especially you don't, but you wouldn't serve in ministry. You wouldn't be worship leader or whatever the case is. Boy, this ain't easy. Church, church, church don't care, boy. Church is getting like a frequent church, get ready. <laughs> you tell church you tired because you get up from work 6.30. After being awake from, after being out of your house from 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30, and church don't care because church have church tonight. At 7. And then church don't want you just there. Church wants you to smile. You, you what? You, 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 what happened? Come on, come on, wake it up, wake it up. I was in my table one morning for the seven o'clock service, and uh, and the team. I don't must be the second team, but I don't know what team it was. It was about two years ago, and they were singing, and uh, and and Pastor Delta came out and they were singing, man, seven o'clock in the morning. I said, ah, y'all, y'all dead this morning, man. Y'all need to wake up. I said, I said, I was saying like, come here, come here, Pastor Delta. It's seven o'clock in the morning, man. Come on, man. He said, y'all need to wake up. Yes, we do. It's, it's early. <laughs> but that church, church demands that. And church don't care that Keith was here until 3 o'clock this morning. When Keith show up tomorrow morning, you better have a big smile on your face. You better be happy to see us. And you better, you better excite us. Bring the noise, baby. <laughs> this ain't no joke, buddy. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't no joke. And I was about to say this. This ain't, this ain't no joke. And I think a lot of us leaders need to be reminded of how demanding we are. And we need to be careful that we are balancing what we are demanding with what we are giving. Because we, we, we demand a lot. What in the world are we giving? Lord. You demand it so much and you can't even prepare a good word for Sunday? Glory to God. Whoosh kata. You, when you demand it this much, you, I need to be guaranteed you can be anointed every Sunday. I need you to be anointed. All right. If I got to do all this, my for God's at least rare, please be anointed. Yeah. And then you don't even get no job. Right. Your job is church. Right. So how, there's no excuse for you not to be anointed. None. This church who, who, who play and who, who paying these guys. I, I am I am disappointed with a lot of places that I go to where I hear that the musicians are full time. You 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 actually being paid to do this, and that's how you sound. Even some of these guys who get stipend. I don't care. You get a stipend. You should be better than that. No, you, you should, your run should be faster than that. No, I mean, go on. You get, you get paid for this. You know, you demand so much and given so little. That is cause revolt, rebellion. 
That's why so much is the way they are. Anyway, glory to God. What we talking about? Over yours. Huh? As good as now? Okay. All right. We have 10? down in our minds. Number one was the point on honor that I just made just now, because honor is very important. Um, uh, and with honor, let me just go to the last, this last, this one caveat now. With honor, you must, you must know when the brook is dried up. I can tell you. The same God that sent Elijah to the brook sheriff <laughs> is the same God that says the season is over. It's time to go to Zarephath. You must know when your brook is dried up. And if you stay to the brook that's dry, eventually you can be eating mud. Because if it's dry, where there was once water, there's now muck. Yeah, and then the raven can stop coming because the raven was coming because the water was there. And so you can actually stay there and die. Because you have sworn loyalty to the brook rather than loyalty to the voice of God. I'm going to say something now because if I stand up, I can be alone. We are not supposed to be living on God's instruction. <laughs> We're not to live on God's instruction. It is very dangerous to live on God's instruction. Now, throw your Bible at me now. I know. Keep on listening. It's very dangerous to live on God's instruction because that's how we have all these denominations now because people are living on God's instruction. We're supposed to live on God's voice. God's instruction is, I heard God say, and I locked into what I hear God say. Not realizing that God, faith comes by hearing, not having heard. God is constantly speaking. And so you cannot get locked into what he has said. You must be locked into what he is saying. And so you must stay postured at the lips of God to hear exactly what he is saying. And what he is saying, the same God, there, if, even if you go through the whole process of time, when in, in, in the Garden of Eden, they were eating only vegetables. And then God spoke again. And now they started eating a little meat and wine. And then God spoke again. And then he put some controls to the meat that they're supposed to eat. And then he spoke again. And said, how consider you anything unclean that I say is clean? Kill and eat. Some of us have got, have got locked into what he has said and are not, not in a place to hear what he is saying. And so, so people of God, the same God, like this, this can be expanded in so many different areas. The same God that told you connect to that person is the same God that says that season is over now, disconnect. The same God that sent you to that brook or that church that ministry, whatever you want to call it, is the same God who can say, okay, that season's over. That's good. You got what you needed. It's time to move. Now, the key thing here is that you got to be postured to hear the voice of God. Make sure you hear the voice of God. If you ain't here, keep on listening. Keep on listening. Once you have heard, it is better to obey God than to obey man. Honor the man but obey God. Say one more time. Honor the man, 
but obey God. Know what God is saying. Is that clear? All right, good. You're talking about respect and honor. You understand? I want you to say a little more about that. The respect is part of it. You talked about with, um, there's so many things you said are so profound about there's no option when it comes to your assignment as a worship leader. If the pastor has to go somewhere or this and that and the other and, and walking with your man of God and connection with your man of God. Um, just like, just I say that again, because when you come to worship group, and uh, I think some of us need to hear that, especially those of us who got a little group, because we special because we got a group. Uh, I, I don't care who you are, I don't care how that you are, you, be, you, should be in, you should be committed to a house. Committed to a house and submitted to a house. Yeah, especially with that, sir. A lot of people, is whenever you ask them what church they go to in groups or whatever, they, they like to say they in transition. I don't know what that means. You know, do you know what that means, sir? Um, and so um, we got to be careful of that as well. In, in reference to respect and honor, um, you have to build that relationship with your pastor as a worship leader, even your assistant. Um, a lot of times we don't want to meet with our pastor. I don't know why, but meet with him. Now, when I meet with my pastor, we don't, we don't meet in the office anymore because it's, it's at a point now, uh, you know how we talk about ranking and all of that. It's at a point now where after church, I can actually see him about something. Um, recently, I just saw him on Sunday. Um, from this year started, we've been having classes with ordained ministers as it relates to instructions when given. If, if I give you the, uh, the assignment to pray, I don't want you to sing for half an hour before you pray. Your job is just to pray and get off the scene. And so um, instructions oh, yeah. are now being given again to the body of Christ, right? So I said, sir, from this year started, I've, ha I've not had a, a practice with the praise and worship team. We have a, an array of songs, even new um, original songs that we would like to do, but we can't get a day in. When, when we do have a day off, it's either him preaching or first lady preaching somewhere. And so we're always on the go from this year's start. So he said, that's no problem. I'll give you Tuesday. Tuesday or Thursday is good for you. He much pastors, they'll just give you a day, but he gave me an option. Right. Why? Because we have built that relationship. And, okay, you want to take Tuesday? I'll take Thursday for the classes. Straight. And, and so it is. And so even when Bishop is traveling and the team is going with him, sir, um, permission, um, Bishop Denzel is going. I, I heard. That's fine. Go, go. <laughs> you know? And a lot of times when you think he doesn't know, he knows. Now, one time. Uh, I was asked to sing somewhere, but I did not give the person a yes. I said, if you want me to sing, you write my bishop and you let him know that you, re you request me to be there. The person still did the advertisement. I did not know. So I saw him and he's like, it's not like you to, to um, say yes to somebody without telling me, even though now, if I go to him, he say, that's nothing. You don't have to come to me with everything, Eunice. But this, this was kind of simple to me, too. But he knew that this, this is not Eunice. Right. Now the fly is out, and, but you didn't say anything to me. Yeah. I said, sir, I did not tell them I would sing. I felt so bad, so I, I was upset. And I went and I called and I said, how could you send out a flyer, tag my pastor, and you did not ask him? And so, tag him. <laughs> no, sir. It ain't happening. Afterwards, he said, I want you to honor it. Go and do it. Only because he did it. I said, don't you ever do that again. Because we have developed a relationship, and that means the world to me. To have the trust of my pastor, and he knows that I'm not going to do anything foolish, but I'm, I'm always going to let him know what I'm doing because you don't ever know people's motives in what they do. Uh, and so when I come to him, he say, well, I saw it, but I knew you would come. That's fine. Go do it. Do it, baby. Just do it. You know? And he's all for his children excelling in the things of God. And so I'm just blessed and fortunate to have a great pastor um, that I'm, and, 
and you know coming up under him with with respect and honor nothing can get between that because we've had cases where people came to him on the side and say i think a male should be doing worship in your church you know little things like that or we would have where people just come to bring discord and say well um i don't think i am um, eunice caused me to leave this church uh just for instructions you know and 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 so there are little things that could, but when you have developed a relationship with your pastor, you know, any little thing is going to deter him when it comes to you. And so that's why it's important that you have that relationship with your pastor. Um, one other, if I may, one other example with the respect and honor, um, as I reflected early this morning, I thought about our group, and this is such an awesome set of people. And the way after we finish ministry, and you know, I'll turn the gate and say, oh my God, Keith, oh, you really ministered tonight. My God. And he's like, no, sis, you, you ministered. <laughs> then I go to Yasmin, Yasmin say, mm -mm, mm -mm. you, you, all you. <laughs> I said, but Yasmin, my God, you do that. So it's such a respect. Marisha, them notes, and you know, I wasn't singing after you to that, that concert. Only, only. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a fun thing, right? <laughs> but the respect that we hold for one another's anointing is remarkable. And I am so honored to be in a group of beautiful, beautiful hearts, beautiful, yes. Wow. That's so special. Um, and just to add to what Eunice is saying, one thing that I'm in the process of learning now, understanding how honor covers you. And how, similar to Eunice, most times when I get asked to go out places, I run it through Bishop. And most times I don't know what the church is like, I don't know what the pastor is like, or I don't know what I'm going into. He may know, and he may say, okay, no, that's not the environment for you to be in. Um, or God may say to him directly, no, Marisha, don't go. Um, and there have been instances where before I had this understanding of honor where I went places and it wasn't where I was supposed to be. And yeah, I was not supposed to be there. And, and, and now I, I, I said I'm still in the process of learning, but I have such an appreciation now of what it is to honor the person that you call pastor. Because when he says, I don't have a good feeling about this, don't go, he's covering you. He knows why he's saying what he's saying. He hears from God. You trust him to hear from God. And so if he says no, don't turn up your lip, don't turn up your face, don't roll your eye, don't suck your teeth, you know, and be mad because the pastor don't let you go nowhere. But understand that he's covering you. He's covering you. She's covering you. They know why they're saying no. They hear God. Trust the God in them and honor them. So that was my other little add-on piece there. Said that really honor honor is what builds that relationship. That relationship you're talking about, honor builds that. When your posture is, my pastor didn't have no time for me. He didn't even talk to me. He didn't care praise him. Praise him. You you ready in this honor? And so there'll never be no relationship. If you want true relationship, honor him. Just as simple as because there are uh, there are persons who, who have little ministries and stuff like that. I had to kind of rebuke somebody right in this house um, recently. Um, I, I was seeing too much stuff, man. Stuff on on Facebook and stuff like that. Same thing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm seeing all these things, and I'm saying they don't serve in leadership, but they're a member here. They don't serve in leadership, but they're members. And so I'm seeing stuff that they're doing. This on the other. I said, "How you? Wh what you doing? Yeah, you're doing this, man. Just gotta push ministry, man." I said, "No, you want to order, bro? I said, push it ministry. Push, push it ministry." <laughs> I said, "No, bro, you want to order." Where, where you going? I go, no, where are you going? Because you're like, I'm here, and you over there. So you, you kind of, you, you didn't, you didn't up from under the covenant. You need me to go with you. You know? And so, the <laughs> Bible talks about zeal, but not according to wisdom. <laughs> and so it's a very important. And honor builds relationship. That's the point I wanted to make. Honor builds relationship. You start honoring, that that will join you together with your leader. Um, I I realize how critical it is to talk about honor more and more, and, and the church knows that I do it more because it's not something I'm comfortable doing because I feel that the church has run out with it. We run out. 
we've taken honor overboard and men of God are not living honorably but demanding honor and so that's that's one of the things I, I, I ran away from. It took so it was hard for me to accept having an armor bearer for me because I hate it. And I tell him, don't call it, you know my armor bearer, use my assistant. I hate I hate the word. I don't like it because I don't like the connotation of it. What what is rep, what has become in the body of Christ? Yeah, you know, so you may ask and then just tell people to use my assistant. You know, that's, and I because I it's been so it has been so so I, I don't want to say overrated, but it's been perverted. That's the word. Thank you, Emma Laquan. It's become perverted so much that I just don't like what it, what the connotation attached to it is. Um, um, but the Lord had to rebuke me. He says, no. There's something that I want to pour into that young man and another young man that I need them directly up under you. I need, I need the Joshua next to Moses to release something into their lives. And so you need to calm down and let them walk with you. And so the Lord had to teach me honor. And I realized by not teaching honor, and even in this house, I'm, I'm a, I'm confessing as a pastor for I for a long time for five we open we've been open for six years and for almost six years we have not torn on honor and have not established honor and God says you are shortchanging this house because the people can't honor you properly and therefore the release that can get to them through honor they can't get because you ain't teaching them what honor is all about and I wasn't teaching it because I have seen it perverted. And so I say, no, I even ain't dealing with it. I don't want nobody to open no door for me. I don't want nobody to open my Bible. And you can't fight for me no how. So I straight. <laughs> <laughs> so I, <coughs> I can just do me and I straight. But now we've established it. So honor is critical. Let's move on. Um, Mr. Mississippi, I joke with you with the That was funny, though. <laughs> See, yeah. This is my armor bearer right there. That's my armor bearer. Do you God? I'm a bearer with benefits. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yasmin, there's a point that, that Yasmin didn't finish make. You mentioned it to me. The date. I thought it was really good. No? What was it anyway? Say what it was. You remember what it was? You don't remember it? Oh, that's why we don't need to go there because you remember it. All right. If it comes up, you can say it. So we said we did song choice. Keith was doing song choice. Keith, you finished that? Yes. Choosing songs. Mm-hmm. Keith, you, something you said, and I want to ask you this. You mentioned about, well, it's not challenging you, but it's, I, want, I want to just bring clarity for balance. You mentioned about in leading worship, it's an audience of one. Right? Um, something I heard from Kirk Franklin and I always loved it about 15 or so, so years ago he said I didn't write Stump to get nobody saved I wrote Stump to get their attention I wrote Stump to draw them in while we worship to the audience of one how critical it I- is it for us to engage our audience of 80, 200 for you, 1200, 1500 how critical is it to win 2,000, you know, <laughs> you know, so, sorry, Goff, 18,000, you know, <laughs> how, because I, I, I want to make sure we, we, we say it in balance because I, I, people would have left here and heard you say last night, you said last night that it's an audience of one, people leave here, forget them people, I have an audience of one, balance that for me, or I, because that, that needs to be said about, what about them though? Oh, sir. Certainly, and this was something that um, Lady Jackie um, alluded to when she made a question um, or made a comment um, last night, and I agree. Um, Apart from your worship, blessing God or um, ministering to God or for God, it should also edify your people. Um, And one thing you want to be, you want to know, like the culture and the temperature of your house as well. So the kind of music you're going to bring to like um, Lady Jackie said yesterday, um, what we may do in Tabor and what may work for Tabor and like really bless our people um, may not work at her church or may not work here at um, at Life. But of course, um, you you have to use wisdom in all in all you're doing. And then again, um, it goes back to my number one point in in song selection was pray, pray. God will tell you. He'll direct you. He'll show you. And then. 
just just you it, it, it should always be your aim to be well rounded and then God will give you what's for your house, I believe. When is this topic? How do you do topic? I don't talk. I don't I don't talk. I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher. There will be a preacher. There, there are people that are given that assignment. That my, my assignment is to worship. Um, the most I will do um, right at the beginning is... Um, yeah. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together, lift your hands or whatever. Or like I'm um, exhort with the scripture and we're going in. We're going in. I'm not, I'm not the preacher, so I'm not coming up here to talk to anybody. Amen. Well, that's just me. Yeah. I, I, I went through the phase of planning scripture. And a prophetic word to go with it. <laughs> I had a word to go in there, and then from this on, I knew where I would go. I get my word plan. I, I, I never forget where. Remember the brackets, right? When um, we did holy. Holy, man! Before I was home, and I was so ready. I read Isaiah six. <laughs> I couldn't wait, boy. We introduced that song that in the year that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. The Bible talks about the seraphims and the cherubims. And they looked at one another as they fly and they cried, Holy, holy is the Lord. Uh, for the earth is full of his glory. Come, Vashta, holy. <laughs> right. And and I I look at it, I look back and I say, boy, you was Lord God, you were so sincere, but you were so slow. <laughs> you I and the things I did then, like I would never consider doing them things now. Many these mini sermons and sermonette. Now, Keith, stop that. Because Keith, you are more preacher than 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 most people I know. You you just before I lay out on you, throw some real on you. Uh, <laughs> Keith, Keith is a preacher. Pre you sit down in a conversation with Keith, and Keith is a preacher. Nothing Keith says is said without substance. Keith don't waste words. When Keith talks, you shut up and listen, because it's it's about to be powerful and it ain't gonna be long. I finish with that. <laughs> that, that, that's key. So key does it. So where I was back then, I was brother dancers back then. I was no 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 breath, no medicine, no nothing. as brother dancers, and I just thought that you had to do plenty talking to engage the people. You know, I, I that's what I thought, and um, and now talking annoys me. It really annoys me. Come on, come on, bless him. Come on, come on, man. Shut up, man. Sing. Shut up and sing. Is that possible? Yeah. Shut up and sing. <laughs> you know, that's how I feel. Um, anybody, anybody does the talking and does it in control? How many moves for talking? Or, or are we all in agreement with shut up and sing? Earlier, or yeah, years and years ago at, at the Grover Times when I used to lead worship, um, I don't agree in over excessive talking, but I do believe, especially in, in settings of, let's say, your morning worship, where Oftentimes, the praise and worship leader is the one, or someone from the praise and opens up service. I think it's a good concept or a good practice to have something to say, other than because I'm an, unlike some people get annoyed with the, with the talking. I mean, with the, with the with the talking. Um, sometimes I get a little annoyed when by you just get the the chord start and, and people just start singing. And I think in the church setting, I think the fact that we are still a family of believers that an encouraging word or or God may speak to you. I've, many times I w I'll be, if I know it's leading worship one morning, I would be reading or pray towards that end for something with substance to say, um, hopefully as deep as Keith, that will be um, at least geared towards preparing the hearts and minds of people to come and worship. Um, we, have, we all have Sunday mornings where you could tell this one, it was one of those weeks. And sometimes the whole house has one of those weeks. And, y and you want a word of upliftment, of encouragement. If only just to get them started, to get up. And that's a, 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 that comes with knowing your audience and, and knowing how to actually say the right thing to get them. Yasmin is a pro at it, um, so I'll give it to her. <laughs> we, we move on. Again, that too, that has a lot to do with the structure of your house. Um, the praise seems never the first thing that happens at the table. 
So when it's our turn, we're there to worship. You know what I mean? I and and there 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 was a time when the first thing that happened at the table was praise and worship, but that that's that's not our flow anymore. So it's not left for the praise team to try to produce anything other than to lead in worship. Um, what I was about to say is it depends to on it lands to preparation. For me, whenever that happened, the talking, it was because my keyboard player wasn't set up yet. <laughs> or I'm waiting on the drummer to come to the door so voice could start my song. Preparation. And so as long as my musician's in place and everybody's in place, I don't think talking is necessary. Once people are in place, begin worship, begin singing. Then there's the talking that comes from revelation as you sing. Sometimes as you sing a song, at least for me personally, when you sing a song, a scripture is revealed or a word is revealed. And so for me, I'm going to be honest, I've cut songs, stop, or and at the end of the song, I would say what it is that God has revealed to me. Nothing pre I've never premeditated talking, like saying, this is what I'm going to say for I sing this song. I'm not. <laughs> I never did that. <laughs> But <laughs> there have been times when I've, um, song, things have been revealed or scripture has been revealed and I would stop to say something but that, and then quickly move right back into worship. But when you stop to say something, you're going to go back, right? You don't yeah, always, yeah. You don't book, you don't have to no, no, it's not a word, not a message. No. It's not a <laughs> message. And you go back to your song. And I'll go back into the song because sometimes that word... Um, reveals more of the message of the song. It makes the song clearer. It makes the song even more receptive to the, to the, to the audience. Yeah, something that they needed to hear to say, this is why I'm saying, uh, Lord, you're mighty, or Lord, you're holy. Or this is, you know, it makes it more receivable. Case in point, yeah. Which is so key. Now you ain't prepare that. Spirit of the Lord says something, and he and he says for you to say there. You say it, and you leave that alone. Don't go look for that. Yeah. That's why I want to make sure that we don't leave here. You know, well, Yasmin's do it. I like I she's lead worship. She's do it. I can do it too. No, no. What she said that is key, and I want to drive this home is that you sing. Yeah, I didn't come. I didn't. I didn't practice my script. I hear God say something to me, and then that was important for Yasmin out of the cipher. Is God speaking to Yasmin? Is God speaking to the house? That's also very important. Is this a word that God has given to Yasmin? Because many of us that, in, that are, do ministry, um, we have to remember now, we are open now to hear God. And, and you are hearing God. And when hearing God becomes natural as it's supposed to be, then you realize that everything he says is not for everybody. And as we are moving in that realm, we start to hear God more and more, then we must, there's a discipline that comes with hearing God. There's a discipline that comes with hearing God. Because as you hear God, in everything you will say. Everything is your assignment. And you'd be surprised what happened is that you hear God doing worship and God says something to you and you don't say it and then the man will come and say exactly what you heard. You know? And so still as you hear, and this is, do, do the, there's a grace that Yasmin have to do that. And she does it and does it well and knows how to, how to hit it and get up out of it. If that ain't your grace, don't do that. Some people don't exhort well. Exhorting is a gift. Let, let me fool you. Exhort, exhorting is a gift. There's a gift to exhort. You can't watch somebody exhort and say, I can do it too. I, I saw all the groups, some, some of the group, people, the group people in here today. For some of the groups in the here who do concerts, not because it's your concert mean that you have to do the altar call. Y that may not be your grace. You don't have that gift to do it. I, am, I, am, I now have that gift to do it. I didn't have, I, I hated altar calls. I hated them because I didn't know what to say. I remember one time I went to a concert and somebody asked me to lead the sinner's prayer. I was like, wow. I said, repeat after me. Now I let me down to sleep. <laughs> 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 but, you know, you, you got to know what's your grace and what isn't your grace. Back to knowing you. All right, so 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 I, I really will be careful with that. You know, I have, we, we're becoming passionate now about playing, talking, and worship. Man, there's the people who still believe that talking and worship is the way to go. 
also believe that they still have not gotten that deliverance yet. That 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 is so that is so um nineties. Where we were all breaking out. We were all breaking into this and we didn't understand and so there was a need for a lot of explanation and, and, and that's that's good. But man, we we're the past that now. We have we've gotten the revelation of worship now. Um many of us. And so it's just just, just do it. Just worship. Mother them never used to talk in song service. The only talking was turn. <laughs> yeah. T- talking was turn, number, play. And it worked. You know? So this, this praise worship movement has, has developed all kind of out of um, bootleg preachers. That's what happened. It's about the bootleg preachers. People will be preachers who ain't preachers and try to develop. You found this, bro? Play for me if you found it. If you can. Send the rain. This is Yasmin, by the way. Send the rain. She was not supposed to be singing. I called her up during a worship moment. Send and she took it over. Let's do it. I'll try it. Send the rain. What is that revelation coming? God send no doubt. the rain. Send your rain. Delta right? player. Send your Where's John? rain. Where's John? Don't forget Yeah. That's Delta on the keyboard. God send your rain. Thank you, God. We need the rain. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, God, send your rain. For whatever reason, we need the rain. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because this rain is so powerful. It not only germinates, but it refreshes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for this rain. The rain also shifts things. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The dry seasons have caused to settle on the ground. My God, I thank you, Jesus. So we thank you for this rain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for the rain. So wash me all again. Wash me all again in your precious blood. God, wash me all again. All right, stop it for me. The end of go in. The gang come out, yeah. <laughs> we but room, Asha. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, 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 oh. That's Yasmin Grace. Everybody can't walk in that. Um, powerful revelation. Everybody can't walk in that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I, I say it without, without stuttering. Everybody cannot walk in that. And don't even aspire to walk in that. Inspire to walk in yours. Yeah, you try, you mess that up. You know. Yeah. Now, point number one the rain is germinate. <laughs> you, got, you get it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can wait that. <laughs> so <laughs> you <laughs> you you gotta know you gotta know where you is. <laughs> like I don't I, everybody can everybody just can't do that. No, no. So you gotta know you gotta know you. 
that, 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 that was good. That was perfect. Thank you, Delta. That was good. All right. Um, excellent. Okay, let's do that. Um, the next one we had we didn't get to was um, um, in Keith did the overall talk about song selection. I think this is now number nine. I think it is talking about choosing songs for praise and worship versus choosing songs if you just got a group, if you were just an artist who sing. You know, um, um, Marisha talk. Um, okay. I don't know. Hmm. There are songs that um, that are written that are perfect for Denzel and friends to sing because of the talent and the training and the experience that the singers have. And then there are songs that are not for Denzel and friends to sing, even though we have a certain level of talent and experience and gifting. Um, I remember, <laughs> I remember we were at um, that year. Farm Fest was in the was in the the hall thing, where Ty Trebet was singing, right? And um, um, I think it was Bishop who cracked the joke, or maybe it was Kenyatta. I think. Asks us if we're ready to do that. If we're ready to carry on, like how Ty was carrying on, jumping up and down, bouncing around the stage and flipping and all the things he was doing. And his people, and they was jumping up and down. And um, don't get... The answer was no. <laughs> the answer was no. <laughs> the answer was no. Now, don't get me wrong. We probably could sing the songs, like vocally, but looking at, at, at Ty Trebet and his, his people, that's Ty, man. That is Ty. And... Um, and so the, I think the most important thing to understand is that there are songs that fit, um, that, that fit, but we have to choose songs based upon our, our, our giftings, our talents, our abilities, uh, uh, based upon what we have before us. So that's important. Um, but in terms of song selection, um, is that our, uh, Keith, Keith and Pasadena, they say, and our body type. We have to choose, <laughs> we have to choose songs. <laughs> Based on our body type, because Keith say he ain't running. I with him on that. I ain't running either. I ain't running. I ain't running. You know you do the jump where you just lift your feet off the ground a little bit. You just lift your feet off the ground. Or you bend your knees and make it look like you're jumping. Right. Right. Lord, deliver us from being fat. Right. So, <laughs> so there are those songs. But in terms of song selection, um, we were having a conversation over breakfast. About these worship, about worship songs, because there are a lot of songs out there that um, that they they work in a moment, because that was the agreement that we came to, <laughs> that the songs work in a moment. Um, for example, there's a song by Lawrence Flowers. The song says, "Oh, the worshiper in me wants to break free from the cares of life that seem to weigh you down." Whatever. I give you more, I give you more, I give you more. The song is very eye focused. The song is talking about the worship experience. And in the right moment, that song can work. It can. However, it's difficult for you to say that after that song worked in that moment, after that song worked in that moment, that song was so good, y'all, we should sing that again next week Sunday. Why are you singing it? What's the purpose of the song? Because the song, the song is not really saying, God, we bless you, God, we praise you. The song is talking about how the worshiper feels in, in the right environment that is appropriate. But that's not always what you should be saying. We shouldn't always be talking about how we feel, right? There's another song. <laughs> There's another song. Bishop and I agreed on this until one day, one Sunday morning, he was sitting down to the keyboard playing it. Um, there's a song, I think, is it, is it Alvin Slaughter? Or, anyway, Dance With Me, O Love Of My Soul. I do not care for the song. I really don't. Like, that's me. That's me. I really don't care for the song. Dance With Me, O Love Of My Soul, to the song of all songs. I feeling it. 
I feel it. But I have to say this. I have to say this. That morning that Bishop played that song and the church sang it, in that moment, it was very appropriate. It was extremely appropriate. And I will admit, my pride got in the way for a little bit because I could not stand the song. But then I said, you know what? No, Marisha, fix this. Fix yourself. No, because in this moment, this song is necessary. And for the person who, whose heart has been broken, who has had a love that has been perverted and tainted, in that moment, that song was ministering to them. And, and so it's so important in our song selection. Also, too, it's, it's important that we choose songs that, have, that, have, that has language to the best of our ability that goes according to, um, there's a passage of scripture. Let me see if I still have it open here. Yes. Um, in Colossians 3, verse 10, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. A lot of times as worship leaders, we don't think about the fact that the songs that we're singing teach people about our God. We expect only the pastor to do that. But the reality of the matter is, when you sing a song and you're talking about God in the song, especially to the new babes or even the unbelievers that come into our worship services, we're teaching them about our faith. We're teaching them about God in the songs that we sing. So if we sing, my God is big, so strong, so mighty, to the person who has not ever encountered our God or to the person who's in a situation where they need God to be big, strong, and mighty, we're telling them, we're speaking to that situation, but we're teaching them about some of the characteristics and attributes of our God. So we need to be careful in choosing songs to make sure that our songs, when they, when they speak about God or when they speak about our interactions with God, that they are correct. We need to be careful with that. One of the songs... Um, that Bishop has pointed out, and, and I think um, Dr. Judy McAllister has pointed out, is that song where everybody is singing and listen to me, that's my jam, I kill it. Most of the times when I go out to sing a solo, I sing the song, fill me up, whoa. You provide the fire, I provide the sacrifice. That ain't really right. You understand? It's not really right. It's not really the way that things are I guess you could say structured to be, because the truth of the matter is God reveals himself and our worship is in response to who he has revealed himself to be. So we don't tell God, you do this and then I do that. No, God says, here's who I am. Here's what I've done for you. This is what I've established in you. Now you are responding to who I am and to what I've done. You, you don't tell me what to do and then you do back, right? And so we need to be careful with things like that, because if we're going to sing the song, if we're going to sing the song, we need to make sure that we place the right understanding in the minds of the people, because they, you could actually cause somebody to relate to God incorrectly by the song that you sing. And so we have to be careful with that. We have to be careful. I'm not saying throw the song out, because like I say, that's my jam. That's my jam. But we must be careful. Songs are not only supposed to create atmosphere. They're not only supposed to get people to sing together. They're all, we are also supposed to be teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Um, let me just touch something on that as well. One of the things when we had um, met over breakfast uh, that I said to them is that you have to respect the experience. Um, as he said, certain songs, it just don't go. Sometimes uh, I'd have a praise team member bring me a choir song. Like, this is not appropriate for <laughs> praise and worship. Um, you don't have praise and worship songs, but um, in my time of, of, of experience, there are songs that God will give you to encourage the body of Christ. Yeah. Uh, um, an encouraging song that he normally gives me his precious Jesus. I love that song. I am persuaded. And people, their, their spirits are lifted. They, 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 you could see the warrior come back. Um, they're not as frail as they used to be. And then their prophetic songs, their encouraging songs like, um, your ladder will be greater despite all that has been done. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet. And, and people are inspired and they, it, it gives them enough now to go another year. Uh, without having to to feel like they they are their wits end, there there there's songs like on the spot songs like um, Marisha did. Alpha and Omega was not planned. 
that's an on the spot song. Like there's something that happens and, and that's where you put that song. That's that's like one of those songs that you put there. That isn't a song that you sing every worship time. Um, well, I wouldn't. Okay, teach his own. Um, and then there's like these finale songs, like like to him who sits on the throne. When you then finish all that you've done, you, I yeah, I call them finale songs. You you tear them up and like oh the glory so arise, you know. And so every song has its place. And so I say respect the experience because of what they said. There's some songs that really that we don't like. <clears throat> like, um, um, you, uh, you, um, there's this song that um, I heard and I could not stand it. I just couldn't stand it. And then I heard another praise team sing it. And I was like, oh my God, we got to do this. <laughs> Ooh, glory to God. And, and so, you have to respect the experience. You understand? Really, really good. Really good. Um, as you're talking, I saw the transition of, of worship. I think this transition. And you begin connecting to the people. I think you should begin there. Because you didn't pray. And you begin connect, connecting to people. You won't get the room. I talked about it last, yeah, I think last night or before. I, I, I look for somebody in the room, I will get them. I will get them. Now, I don't get them with my talking, my song selection, my band. my. Pre That's why you got to sound good. You got to sound good. You gotta sound good now. This, yeah, joyful noise is for the people, not for the priesthood. Yeah. All right, um, and this is not that kind of session for us to talk about that kind of stuff. But, <laughs> but we 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 didn't we didn't come to do the mechanics and the technical things like that. Um, but but we assume that y'all who here know that that you you suppose somebody wrote, somebody um texted me just last week and asked me. They said, Pastor, I was. I, I don't know my ministry, and I woke up. I don't ever do this, but this morning I woke up, and I was just singing and singing and singing. And I sang as I was getting dressed, and just sang all day. And I really believe, I'm sure I believe it's the Lord who told me that I'm supposed to be in the praise team. And so they sent me a text. I'm texting my phone right now. Um, and they said, I, they said, Pastor, I am not the best singer, but based on what I felt that morning, I really believe that God said I'm supposed to be in the praise team. I said, baby, die what God said. That is not what God is saying. I said part of being on the praise team is the prerequisite that you have the ability to sing well. Not just to sing. Because everybody can sing. Everybody can sing. But you must have the ability to sing well. And in our praise team, we will check you to see if you can sing well. And if you cannot sing well, then we will send you to another area of ministry that you can do well. Not just do, but do well. Um, so you got to perfect the gift, and you got to be tight because that's what wins the unbeliever. Unbelievers need the wow factor. Unbelievers need the unchurched need the wow factor. Now, the the us, those of y'all who waiting, some of y'all do come in. Y'all only come in for start worshiping. Y'all y'all wait for some talking right now and start worshiping. Those people, it don't matter with them, because they come to go in, and they can go in no matter what. But there are people who come there who, who sister, who sister, sister, um, sister McKinney invited the church because it's her birthday. And she invited her whole family there. Yeah. And there's 25 of them. And 23 of them, this, this, the, la the invitation, the last time in church when they had a linen suit to the soldier for funeral. <laughs> so they don't do church. And so if you ain't tight, see your money on your run. And you can miss them. And they done in they ain't deep like that. So when when Eunice and, and the husband of Bridget them start pouring in, pouring out and pouring in, whatever it is be there. They say, really? So number one is the I think the transition. You begin with the house. You end with an audience of one. And then there's a transition that takes place. All right? That you transition. As you get them and you move towards a place, and then there's an interface. There's an interface where where the people and the God connect, where you where you are actually honoring God. You you didn't shift in now, but there's a slight move of interface where the two is happening, and and it's an amazing that it happens there because right there is where you hand glory to God. Thank you, for Revelation, where you hand the people over to God. You like I've. Okay, God, I, I can't run nothing else with them. So now I turn them over to you. 
and now I get to you now. And so now he'll bring them the rest of the Good God Almighty. I didn't even think about that just now. That's some good stuff right there. Press record. <laughs> All right. So that I, and, and that, that was fresh just now. So that ain't dance. So let's, let's, thank you, Holy Ghost. That that that's important. That you that you 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 are to focus to them. To me, when you begin worship, if you're in corporate worship, this is not personal worship. This is not private worship. Private worship, one audience, God. Corporate worship, there is the house. That's why we call it corporate. All right. Now, prayer meeting, audience of one. Because you know, when it can, people going to prayer meeting. Don't need nobody to tell them, come on, prison. I came to prayer meeting, dude. <laughs> Everybody will come to prayer meeting. I came because I know what I come here for. All right? Uh, but Sunday morning, you know, your little Wednesday nights and those who, you know, people come there and they ain't everybody there, so you need to focus on them. And you get them. And as you get them, you get them, you get them. Now you're done with them. You turn them over to God, and now you turn all towards God. Does that make sense? Right. You know, how do you get them to put their lives that, you know, God is like, something just going to happen. Yeah. And you need to shift from these particular songs that you sing out. Now, that's one of the problems that I don't have because I'm the pastor. Yeah. And I lead the way, and I on the keyboard. Y'all don't, if you look at me funny one more time. <laughs> look, look at me funny one more time. Look this way one more time. What you get shame. What you get shame. Uh, but but for 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 me, <laughs> yeah. Let the rest of them answer, cause I like you. I, I wish you look at me one more time. But if I change, we ain't part of this song. Say it, say it, say we ain't part of this song one more time. <laughs> but let me do say this though. I do look at the congregation. I I I look at the congregation, and like one one Sunday morning, one of my members brought him ma, he Grammy, and he Grammy sister. I can do something for them, man, cause the way we worship. We'll leave them out. And so I was intentional. I was intentional. I got to get Grammy. I got to get Grammy something. Man, we say, I got it. And Grammy's like, yeah. <laughs> I got it. We don't, that's, we don't do all, that all the time, but we get that there just, just for when Grammy them come. Or somebody else come. Or if we, did, we didn't get them there, I'll, I'll do it. And, and everybody think I'm flowing in the spirit, but really I just watching Grammy them. I'm going to give them something. So I'll get to the mic and say, there are some things. I may not know. So mama like, look at that boy. That boy, good boy. Because <laughs> Grammy them can't connect with, let us worship, let us sing, hallelujah. Grammy can't connect with that. Grammy, Grammy ain't there. And then she thinks, she, she didn't think, she, she, she know the song. So it's not a, um, he loves us. She thinks you're saying, oh, how he loves Jesus. And she went to join her and she went, oh, Lord, I ain't know this one either. So, you, so you gotta to me. You gotta watch the house and do that. And the praise team got to know that we want. We, we can't leave nobody out in the house, man. Now that's the pastor talking. Not the rest of them. But I know you ain't the one. You know that you ain't the one. Well, the well through experience, uh, if if you look at the instructions that we give, every time I give them the songs to the bottom half, subject to change. So that's mine. <laughs> Well, um, just just this worship experience um, since Thursday is the perfect example of just that. Because we had a list of songs, we had a script every night, and that did not happen. Any any particular night. Because as you worship, you one song would lead to another song, would lead to another song, would lead to the perfect song for this experience. So, like we were talking about Lord Your Mighty. For me, um, going to glory to the Lamb... It would have worked, but it wouldn't have been the best song for that experience that, that could drive that experience further. We were talking about God's strength. So You Are My Strength was a perfect segue. Um, yeah. but, but that's, I mean, but, but, but again, you need to be, you need to be with a team. You need to be with a team that trusts you and that will go with you. And, that, and, and, and um, something that I talk about a lot with, with our team at Taba is 
when we come to rehearsal, yes, we're rehearsing, but we're practicing God's presence. So we're going to go. We're going to go in. Even in rehearsal. Right. Yeah. Even in rehearsal. Be like, don't, don't just sit there like, okay. No. No. This is about God, and we're going in tonight. Yeah, I want to say that something on that. Um, you said it when you said that it's a matter of trusting your team and trusting your leader. And I think, too, if someone has been established, this person is now your praise or worship leader, you honor the anointing and you honor the grace on their life. So you, you recognize that when they move away from the quote-unquote script, you can trust that they're going to lead you to where you need to go. So there's no need to fear. There's no need to worry whenever that happens. And, and praise and worship is not rigid. It is not a rigid experience. Anything is liable to happen. Because the Bible says God is a spirit and this wind blow it where it listed. It blow it where it listed. And so a praise team, not just the praise leader, the praise team needs to be aware of the fact that anything could happen as long as God is getting the glory. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, glory to God. And offer time. Celebration. Talk about that. The, the, the For for those who who we are many of us are we're, we're becoming so in love with the worst the still moments the worship where you cry out to God and you pour out to God and we can forget and actually it's tied in what we just talked about this now we can forget the need for songs of celebration for songs of praise and celebration the up tempo the hype songs so those deep ones a lot of us here tonight we like deep and we can cry out for an hour everybody can do that. And so there's a need for you to have in your repertoire a collection of praise songs, of songs of celebration. You know what I'm saying? Up-tempo songs that you, you, you need to have them that you can pull out at end. Because they are usually the ones that you, that you have to shift to based on what happened in the, for the house side. Spirit of God will direct you. I mean, you get in that flow of worship, they start flowing to you where you need to go. But with the house side, you need to have a collection of songs in the house that you could use that you could, you know, um, in, our, in this house now, we have our, our, um, our new director of worship who's sitting in for Julie, who decided to get married. Um, Vera, who is now um, um, in charge of the worship here, I told her, I said, listen, man, Vera, we need, to we need to build our database with celebration songs because right now it's limited. So when it's celebration time, um, we, I can almost call off our five songs now. <laughs> <laughs> I can almost call off our five celebration songs. And I said, man, that ain't enough. Die enough, we need more because that is that engages the people. And then we found out these last two nights that in, that invokes some presence in here. These last two nights, and so there is a need. There's a need for us to have those kind of songs for persons who can't go, because m many of us won't go on the mountain. Some folks can't even make the hill. So you gotta help them. You gotta help them to get to that place by having those songs. And that's why, and that's where the musicians are critical. In those type of songs, musicians are critical. The voices can carry us in the worship stuff. But in, 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 in the up-tempo stuff, man, band got to be ready. Band got to have their game tight because it's about, in that moment, it's about wow. It's about wow. It's about being tight and keeping it right, you know. Corn, anything on that? On that whole? Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I can speak on this somewhat because I come from a church where this actually ties into knowing your house. T everything is come coming back full circle. Um, that is a house that doesn't necessarily go in on worship as easily d as we go on go in on praise. So. Um, you look off a good apostolic junk and kind of like um, rake and scrape anything and we will go in for five hours easy. Right. 
easy. If if you don't know what to sing, think of anything that is John Canoe related, anything that is Rick and Scrape, um, or Rick and Scrape him, or anything, and that will <laughs> hit home every single, I guarantee you, every wow. single time. And um, it, it's kind of weird because I've been to different churches, I've, been to, um, um, I've sat under different houses, um, been in different experiences where we go, they go in and worship and go in for five hours. But um, transitioning um, from, then, from them to back, back to my house, um, I need to know that what's for them isn't necessarily for us. The way we worship is unique, it's different. And God has it that way. He's given us each something that's unique, something that's distinctly different from somebody else. Um, so the praise and the celebration and everything, like I think it was last Sunday or something like that. Um, I can't remember what it was, but uh, we had the full um, uh, John Canoe thing, the cowbells and uh, avio and guitar and everything. And it was such a liberty that came in the house um, because... Because we are, um, I don't want to use this word familiar, but we are able to relate to that kind of that kind of expression of worship, and when we were able to relate, it's genuine, and God respects and honors our gen genuineness. Yeah. Is that a word? <laughs> he, he, right. He honors our genuineness. So that's my input on that subject. That is good. I need to let up on that. Uh, the, last thing is, the last thing that we had here. Anybody on that? Or, or what Kwan said? Kwan, you just drive that thing home just now. You hear that nail in there. You drive that thing right. Is um, about sounds. Sounds are important. Now, let me begin with the end of what I've written down here. Let, that it is important that um, if your house is not a house that does sounds, what do I mean by sounds? Um, there are different times of worship where we're not singing a song. We're just releasing a sound. Um, I remember I saw it the first time. I saw this the first time. This is, this is something different. I saw them on table one time. Y'all was going, you went to a season of this. I don't know if you're, you're probably still doing it now. But y'all was just clapping. And I saw them on table. And I lie. I said, this is a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> what kind of nonsense this is? They just clap it. And uh, I, I laugh at them. Um, and then one Sunday, yeah. right here, Lord say, tell them clap. And he said, no, tell them clap in unison. Because they don't clap, they just clap. You know, people, you know, people just mean to be different. Just clapping all over the place. So I, and I stopped and said, no, no. God says, clap. So we're clapping in unison. And everybody started one piece of glory started to manifest in the house. I said, look at this Montebo craziness, would you? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not Montebo. It's a God thing. And the word declares, clap your hands. All ye people, you know? And so, sounds are critical. Now, if you are from a house or in a house that sounds are not the norm, you have to be careful how you introduce it. You have to be very, very careful. And you have to be strategic. Because you, 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 you don't want to seem as though you're creating a doctrine in the house that doesn't go with the house. Like you're trying to create a new culture in the house. Um, I remember when we did it, um, I didn't have the revelation yet. I just heard God one Sunday in the Grove. And, and I, had to, I was telling my talk, I hadn't been delivered for talking yet. And so I, I gave my little Joshua spill, and, uh, and I told the folks, shout. And man, they hollered them old saints and all the mother them in the group. Everybody, they hollered. I mean, the people were screaming. And I was, man, I was like, yeah, and it, it, it caught. And I was kind of scared because I was like, you know, Bishop, my, 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 my pastor, my pastor, old school, my pastor, he, he'd stay on the line. And Bishop looked at me. He said, do that again, boy. 
man, you all shouted. I man, listen to me. And it feels so good because Bishop, Bishop validated me. And he validated and said, man, let him shout again. And listen, that thing tore the house up. So you got to be careful better, and you got to watch leadership. If you go for your shout and the shout don't catch, just let it drop. Kill that. Not dead. All right. There is there, there is a power that is released now, and I if I if I had the time, I would talk about scripturally, theologically, what happens with shout, and why shouts are so critical in scripture. Um, but the one that I will talk about, there are about five or six that a lot has spoken to me concerning shouting. But the one that I think is that is, that applies so much in worship is the blind Bartimaeus shout. That I I refer to it so much because it has become real to me. The blind Bartimaeus shout is the shout that says there are too many sounds in my head. And I have to, I have to get louder than those sounds because if I don't, they're going to control me. Because the people were telling Bartimaeus, shut up. And the Bible says he didn't even answer them. He just cried the more. He cried out the more. In other words, he began to shout even louder. And I have found that to be so therapeutic for Denzel. When, when there are all kind of noises in the background. Because I don't know if you have your own house, you realize that mortgage is very loud. <laughs> Rent is holler. Car payment, great Christ. Commonwealth. <laughs> That's a loud shout. School fees. BC, listen to me. Them things is shout. Don't be married to somebody who ain't saved. That's a shout. Or you're married to somebody who's saved and and still and that's and so that is very therapeutic. But however, you can't take the moment and and try to break down the theological um, um, justification for why the shout is important. You don't have that that liberty when you're leading worship. So which, what I would do is talk about it in, in, our, in our rehearsals. Talk, get the praise team on one accord. And let the praise team show, show them about the shout. And, and make sure it's tight. Get the band to get and get. And make sure you go through it and make sure. Because if it don't hit, it miss. And when it miss, it's hard to recover. Just let it go. Now, the shout is not the only, is not the only sound. There are times where there needs to be sa- times of stillness. And those are powerful times as well. And while I told you the atmosphere is overrated in the church on Thursday night, now, don't, in a corporate setting now, you need, you need times of atmosphere. And there are times when, in this house, where I just tell the percussion, no interest playing, percussion just go over there and play the chimes. I just let the chimes begin to ring. Now, I didn't plan that. The Holy Ghost ordered that. And those chimes begin to play. Just the chimes, nothing else. Um, some people don't know. Y'all know, everybody know chimes is, right? They want the chimes so they can hear what it is. They know they don't, but for those who don't, they're right there. And so we was just in church, and it just, they just started doing the little chime stuff. And eventually, one piece of glory sat in here. And so I'm saying, be open to times of sound. And that could even be sounds of silence. That silence has a sound. And if you can just allow the sound of silence to fill the room. Now, when you on a time limit and you're in a church that only has 20 minutes, you can't do your silence at minute 19. <laughs> Don't do that. So all these things we're telling you, you got to now make them fit in your house, all right? Life Worship Center is a strange, weird kind of house because, number one, the middle of its name is worship. Number two, it got a pastor who's passionate about worship. Number three, you got a pastor who's lead worship. And so we, so I, I caution folks who come here to visit and then say, boy, can't back home. Don't do that because right here, we can worship in here for an hour and 20 minutes. Nobody get rebuked. Nobody get row because that's the culture of this house. In your house, they can't, that, that don't happen on the table unless it is, it, is re- it is allowed to happen, you know. But that's a culture here. Hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half. 
And I, again, full circle, because I remember going to ASAP, and I thought Mark Belton was crazy. Why in the world you're worshiping for over an hour? I was like, man, come on, man, Mark, man, that's enough. And then worse than that, when you go to, back in the day, you go to BFM, you don't know half the songs, know how. <laughs> and, and so you, I, used to be, I used to get cross to ASAP. This is too much, man. Come on, man. Let Dominic look and preach, man. <laughs> Let Rock and only preach. I come there and preach. Let him preach. And, he, and they would worship for an hour and a half. And we have, we have come full circle here. So now we'll sit an hour and a half and worship. That may not be your house. And so wherever house, whatever house you're in, you got to make it fit to that house. You know? In, in that vein, um, there was a time when, because we, we normally have like 45 minutes to an hour for worship every Sunday. Um, there was a time when um, one or two of the members, <laughs> one, <laughs> one or two of the members said, you know, it's too long. It's too long. And so it made me conscious of it. And I, st I, and I, I started doing, doing it like 30 minutes. I got called up to the office. And um, as soon as I it was finished, Rev wants to see you. I said, oh, crap, what do I do? <laughs> right? So I went up. He said, don't you ever sh shorten worship again. If I tell you I want an hour, give me an hour. I don't care. I said, you know, people say, I, I don't care. I said, you give me an hour if, if that is what I, you give it to me. Yes, sir. So whenever <laughs> someone else came to me, I said, go see Rev. Or or you just have to deal with it. You understand? Um, you have a question here. A question? Now, I want to see what you have to say. I want to finish with what you have to say. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm finished. I mean, I just wanted to give that example of, you know, you know, I, I started to listen to what people were saying. And then you have peop the guests who come in and say, my God, whoo, worship was awesome. But then you have the members saying, that too long, that too long. Um, you need to you need to cut that down a little bit, and I go on listening to them. Dumb me, go on listening to them, right. and I got rebuked. Normally, he would rebuke me openly. Right. If there's something I do um, that he's not pleased with, he's gonna he's gonna make an example out of me. Um, but I'm I'm so used to it. I'm trained. It don't face me. I take it. I take. I suck that in, and we move on. I, I he can he can do that. He say he can't do that to bastards. Oh, that's good. He could only do that to, 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 to children. Sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. Good. Yeah, I was about to ask you. What else you want to say something on that, too? Yeah, just fire God. Whoosh, um, uh, Katar. You, you had a question you wanted to ask? Yeah. That's good. That's real good. That's real good. Yeah. That's good. I like it. I like it. I like it. I. I remember for me, just December just going last year, I was I started the question, man, because I ain't gonna lie, we st at life we started at nine thirty. And um <laughs> that's my ma. Uh we started at nine thirty. We don't ever start we, we, we very seldom we start later than nine thirty five. We we start on time. Um and uh, we get out like around one. <sighs> And I really start feeling, I start to feel so bad. Like, I think, man, Denzel, 
Yeah, people and, and apostles call me, pastors call me, say, boy, Dan, you got a good thing there. But you're hurting your church. Your church ain't going to grow because it ain't too long. Right. People calling me, say, man, you, you ain't going to grow to that Dan, so You got to cut it down. You got to try to cut down at least get, get around. If you get down to an hour and a half, two hours, you're going to see more growth. I can hurt your growth of your church. You know, and, 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 and like, dumb me because you keep on hearing it, keep on hearing it. They start like, you know what, I probably need to start cutting some things, adjusting some things. And then I go down to Freeport, December last year, and I go to a church called Agape, Agape House. And they are building the biggest church, the biggest church building in the Bahamas. There's no church building in the Bahamas as big as this church building. The building is huge. And I go there, and their congregation age is around, like, um, Sister Jackie's generation. You know, they're not only, not just young, not just like a 25 year old babe kind of thing. They're seasoned people, you know. So you would think that they can be there in and out. I got there. They started at seven, I think. I got there about eight, as the preacher, I got there about 8 30. I got on the stand at 9 40. They worship and worship and worship and worship again. And then they call the children dance team, five-year-old, six-year-old. They come on the little children speaking in tongues and dancing. When they finish, they start get, they go on it again. I say, Lord, I can never preach tonight. And I get scared now, say, when I go to preach, they can leave. I preach for an hour and 20 minutes. Not a soul leave. When I done, when I done preaching, a um, little boy come to me afterwards and want a word, want hear something from God. He put nine. Want to hear a word from God. It's like, it's like 12 o'clock. Ask Rob Roberts right there. Like 12 o'clock at night. The boy come. He want to hear something because he believes there's a call God in his life and he feel the fire. But he want, know, he, want, he want to truly experience the glory of God. Can I pray for him? It's 12 o'clock at night. The next night, we get into the church. Apostle Grant says to me, um, he says, um, now, Bishop, um, there's nothing after you. So don't cut ministry tonight. <laughs> But I say, Bishop, I possibly got till 12 o'clock last night. He said, no, I noticed that you, because I said, I said, it's so late. I'm not going to pray for anybody. Let's do a general prayer. He said, don't do that tomorrow night. Pray. Do ministry. And they, and they are so unrestricted, and they are building this monstrosity of a building, debt free, in Freeport. And I say, God, I hear you. Because you mind people telling you what you're supposed to do, and you can't do this, and this can't do that. And even in their house. And you minding them. So, and Karen, you were right. You were so on point just now. You, this is what you serve? Serve what you serve. God has given you grace to do that. You know, those who have 15 minutes of praise and worship, my prayers are with you. Hallelujah. Make it work. Make, make, you made that 15 minutes work. Work it to pieces. All right. I think we're done. Any, 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 other, any other comments here? Um, who's that? Who's going to say? Yeah, you did. I just... I just want to. I, I just want to um, say because I, I I don't I don't remember us talking about it a bit about familiarization. Um, I have many friends uh, that are on uh, the praise team, choir, ministry, etc. And um, there there is this. It can be a problem. Familiarity can be a problem. I am just so blessed because all of my siblings are e either on in the choir, all are in the choir, um, but I have a few on the praise team, and I've never, ever had a problem out of them. They have no problem submitting to their youngest sister, uh, and, and that is so important. Um, friendship, you could actually lose friendship because of it. Um, I have a situation where um, every time you speak to a certain person, you get these funny replies and it's out in the open and, and anybody that knows me know that if you do it in the public, I'm going to do it in the public back. And so um, you, have to, you have to know when to separate. And I'm not only talking to leaders, but I'm talking to those that are in the support staff. You have to know when to draw the line. I love this ministry. I love how, how Pastor gets along with all of his, as he said, he has a very young church. And, and even in doing that, there has to be a line in ministry where you, you, know, you have fun 
And then there is a time when you stop the fun and don't ever allow yourself to go over that line. Always let honor and respect pull you back. Amen? I just wanted to say that because, you know, that, that happens in the body. We choose singers because they are friends. We, we also choose singers because they have a good voice, but stink attitude, and it will cause all the other rest of the praise team to want to quit. And so these are little things that are, that are messing up worship teams and choir ministries and, and, whatever, and even the pulpit area. It, it could mess up uh, a ministry if we don't watch out for that. Because I have had people after church say, you want me on your praise team, mate? I said, no. <laughs> I said, no. I've, I have talented singers that are sitting in the pews. One told me one time. Yeah. You see? I'm ashamed. I said, let me go to the tabernacle. But they're always late for church. They have a stink attitude. Yeah. They leave before preaching come on. It, you know, it's, uh, you know they, don't, they don't follow the pastor. When he, so these are things that I look at. And if you ain't carrying it, you ain't, I don't care how good you could sing. You sitting down. And so you got these little things you got to remember in, in these particular ministries. Amen? To, to tag off of that, I think it's, it's important, too, for those of us who have talent to know how to submit. I don't know if you guys noticed, Bishop said that um, Vera is the is the praise team director. I'm not the praise team director here at Life. I'm not. I've never been. Um, before before Vera, it was Julie. Um, and Bishop Bishop talks about the situ scenario all the time. It was very interesting. Um, at one point in time, when Julie was praise team director, Julie was coming to me for voice lessons. So we would be over there, and um, I would be talking to Julie about her voice. And then when we come in praise team rehearsal now, I'm a, a member of the praise team, and she's the director. Um, and it was something that I learned off the college, knowing that, yes, you may have a gifting that is more appropriate for, um, not more appropriate, but, but you might be more gifted than the person who's leading. But that doesn't mean that you can't submit to the fact that they've been placed above you. Yeah. Submission is important. Yeah, you might feel like you could do it better, that's, that's not the point. The point is, this is the person who's been placed here. You need to submit. And you need, you need to be able, as a talented person, to sit down. To sit down and not sing. And not be the person who is up there. You need to be able to say, okay, no, uh-uh. And if your pastor or your praise team leader or whatever sits you down, it's for a reason. And you need to trust when they say, okay, no, no, you need to sit down. Stay here. Take your time. When we need you, we can call you. And all of us need to sit down at some point in time. All of us. We all need to sit down at some point in time. Um, it's a humbling experience. So I just wanted to add to that and say that. David was a mighty man of valor. And the men around David were mightier. You don't have to be. You don't have to be the king to be great. Okay? Word, girl. Yes, sir. I think that's... <laughs> and amen. Yeah, love, love it, love it. Any questions from the floor before we go cry out and holler? And we, I, I think we can, we can join one of the churches with 15 minutes um, praise worships. Right, right tonight. 15 minutes of worship and we out here. Ushkata. Any questions? Tell me the other question. I can't see because I can't see. Uh -huh. That's not a key thing. <laughs> Praise him. <laughs> <laughs> any, any question over here? Yes. Oh, oh, okay, all right, all right, all right, good. All right, that's it, Dan. Let's 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 go. Huh? Final words, Robin. Do you have any words you want to share, Robin? You good?
N number one is be your authentic self. Know your gift. Know who you are. Operate in your truth. Sorry, that's fuzz a lot, eh? That's fast. Number one is be being your authentic self. Know your gift. Operate in your truth. Got it? Number two is knowing your rank. Number three is being inclusive and not exclusive. Number four is be careful not to show off. Number five is purpose versus performance. Number six is respect and honor. Seven is creating an atmosphere, thermometer versus the thermostat. Number eight is song choice. Number nine is group versus praise team in brackets song selection. Ten is ministry preparation. We kind of sort of covered that in the midst of everything, so we didn't really zone in on that. Um, Yasmin mostly covered that. And the corn. Um, and praise and celebration is number 11. And then, of course, the last one that we did was sounds. Shout, celebration, war, cry, be still moments. I'll say that one more time. Sounds, shout, celebration, war, cry, and be still moments. Everybody got that? Awesome. You got it, boo? You got it? Yeah. Okay, okay. Mike Demon, man. <laughs> oh man, I don't know what's going. On. But man, you with us, our, our, our mics have really run their course. You know, you're trying to stretch it beyond. You know, when a tire, when a tire smooth, <laughs> and you know you need a tire, and you waking that until until the wire showing. <laughs> so we had the we had the place now where we just was stalling and stalling. We probably could do that next week. Just go ahead and buy a new a new setup. Of mics, we we didn't we can't even row. He's almost six years. Six years is no, come on, man, that's enough. Yeah, we didn't get our money out ten times over. So yeah, we just gotta shift it out. Hey man, you gonna be alright, sugar? I see you. See, you. come to concert, get your shade on. Back to him. <laughs> Open it. Let's see the shade, man. She advertising on our, our project. Get the back, get the back to him. Get the back to him, say.
Yeah, we, we won't hold you long tonight. We won't hold you long. You gonna make it, Julie? Or you wanna stay down? What you wanna do? You wanna sit? All right, Julie and, Julie and Delton were in an accident this morning. I said, that old demon, that old devil. You know, Delton was the one who prayed, who laid on hands on that boy last night. You know, that old devil. Uh, um, a pretty, 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 pretty uh, serious accident, by the way, I mean. But God kept him. And we honor God for that. We honor God for that. Satan is defeated. Hallelujah. How you looking? Good? All right. Good. All right. This, I mean, um, I am, um, for, for this conference, I intentionally didn't lead worship no night. Um, because I don't need to. They, they have, I have some of the greatest worship leaders in the Bahamas behind me. And so I intentionally didn't lead worship. I've been trying my best, Sister Jackie, to get them to go out without me. I've been trying. Like, y'all just go. Well, I, they could go. I, they, I don't think they could go, they could go as, the, as the Twilights. I don't care what they call it. <laughs> it don't matter to me. They go to Twilights. Um, but they refuse to go. We get like people calling and actually like will pay money. I said, man, I can't make y'all go. No, we ain't getting that. Y'all crazy. If this is named Keith Jones and friends and Keith is making another job, I was gone. <laughs> Keith, I sorry, you can't make it, but I can make that all in nine. <laughs> yeah, man. We got one some one, one festival coming up with that um what? When did it join it? Crab that's um Yeah. Crab fest. One fest crab fest call us and that's and that's my 10th wedding anniversary. So I ain't going to be there. So I tell them, go. They say, no. I said, well, you're all crazy. I just can't get that dollar night. But then I, I ain't saved like them. All right. So y'all, tell you what. I, this, this is my request. I, I have two requests for the night for the priest, for the, from Dan's Rolling and Friends. And Friends. Twilight. I have, t I, I, I have two worship, two songs requested. Um, the two songs from, from, from Tuesday night. Tuesday night. The Amen, 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 Amen. That one, I like that. Then I go. <laughs> and 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 uh, the the one arise, oh God, and say. And then the one that then I say two way, I made three. Um, the one um, that y'all did first last night, the up tempo one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then you let them want to do it. <laughs> that's my request. I y'all do them three songs, and that's fifteen minutes we go. All right, let's give them three songs. I want them, and then we can go because people get church in the morning. People belong to praise team, so we don't be here all night, and we got to get ready for tomorrow. We got to prepare and hear God for the sound for tomorrow. Hallelujah. She does. She has a spirit of disobediency. A spirit of disobediency. Mm -hmm. When, when we did the recording in this in in on August, on in August of 2013, when we did the the concert. The reason in my mind that she didn't sing with Dancer and Friends was because she was with child, and so we had Shanice to sing at, at that recording. Um, the idea was when the child she was with became that she will sing with us the boy run up and down now getting ready to get licensed <laughs> and she ain't gonna be a, she she ain't gonna be a yet i we we have tried Eunice has tried yeah <laughs> she don't sing when she travels she's travel she's she's going to trip that's what she means she's going to trip she don't sing you know all right No, Yasmin forcing me not to flow in my truth. She asking me to lead a rise. She have somewhere to sing tomorrow. Yeah.
Come on, put your hands together. Say, arise, O oh God. Arise, O oh God. And take your place. Don't be a sad, O oh, ancient of days. For you are good. And your mercies endure. And your mercy endure
one of the things that are critical about doing this level of ministry is that you got to love it. You got to love it. And, and, and let me say this tonight. Let me say this. We are not disappointed by the turnout at all um, because it's a mandate God gave us to do this. Um, but even if we were expecting a, like a thousand people to be here, when you love what you do, all right? So let's get, let's get, some of us be so spiritual, we get crazy. Let's forget the feeling the Holy Ghost. And I just want to glorify God because I love God. No, you got to love singing. You know what I'm saying? You got to love singing first. You got to love, do you love, do you love this? And when you love doing this, you just do it because you love it. And especially when you love who you're doing it with. That's another thing. We love what we do this with. And so truth be told, like, if we feel, if we start to feel froggy, like, we'll run all of y'all and stay for another two hours. It's not special for us to spend time in rehearsal and just keep on singing and keep on singing and go in and, and lay hands and prophesy with one another and then sing some more. But we love what we do. You got to love this. It, don't, don't force no one to be on the praise team. Don't do that. Don't force them. They got to love it. Let me say this next thing. I, I want, please, those of you that came out, I need you to sign the, the sheet in the back. I need you to sign the sheet in the back. God has opened some crazy doors of favor to dance the and friends. And the Lord spoke to me on the way here. He says, honor the ones that came first. He said, honor the ones that came first. When, we, when the Lord told us to do this event, the door of favor had not opened yet. And that's why it's so important. I told you that, that obedience is what releases glory. It's obedience to God. And so God told us to do this. We said we can do it. Not knowing the door that he was going to open. A door, a, he opened a door. He opened like a city. He just like, and I mean, it, it's, it's so much bigger than a door that God has opened. So, and I, I want to honor, and I think y'all are cool with that, yes. that we honor those who came yeah. over these last three nights first. All right? Um, if, depending on how, how, how things pan out, you're going to hear about it more in the months to come. But um, I thank God that y'all came. Yeah. I thank God that y'all came. I just wanted to say it right here. I just want to say it right there, in, case, in case we forgot to say it. Thank you for coming, um, for being here. Thank you so, so much to all of the churches that came out. Um, we, I think we had about 23, 24 different churches that were represented um, over these past three days. That means so much to us that they came to be a part of it. And I, our, our biggest passion is that they take this and apply it. You know, take it and apply it and make transformation as a result of it. All right. A couple more songs that we out of here. All right. Hallelujah, yes. Let's go, Corn. How many know that the promises of God are yes and amen? Yeah. Everything that he spoke to you, yes, you can take that to the yeah, bank. Yeah, 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 it yeah. is so. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise for your word. Hallelujah. It is so. <laughs> it is so, y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey. Come on, let's lift it. Amen, amen, amen. It is so. It is so. Amen. It is so. It is so. Lift your voice. Oh, oh.
glory to the name of Jesus. Thank you for your word, God. You've never lied. You've never lied, God. You are truth. And we give you glory for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Every promise is Yeah! 
King of kings and Lord of lords, because you're worthy of glory, worthy of honor, because 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 you're holy, you are mighty. Say say because you're mighty. Yeah, you are, you are, you are, you are. Because you're mighty. God, you're mighty, mighty, mighty. Oh, you're mighty, victorious. You're all powerful and you're glorious. Say you're mighty. You're mighty. You're mighty. Victorious. Victorious. All powerful. All powerful. And glorious. And glorious. You're mighty. You're mighty. Victorious. Victorious. All powerful. And glorious. You're mighty. Victorious. Victorious. All powerful. your voice and say something wonderful to him. Come on, lift it. Hallelujah. Father, it's an honor and a privilege to stand in your presence. Hallelujah.
maker of all universe. It's an honor just to stand before you, holy, holy, holy God Almighty. Come on, tell him. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to worship you, maker of all universe, maker of all an honor it's an honor just to stand before you with a grateful heart with a grateful heart I lift my hands to you proclaiming Lord you reign with a grateful heart I lift my hands to you, proclaiming, Lord, you reign, Lord, you reign, we sing great, great are you, Lord, greatly to be praised, greatly to be praised. Ah! 
But if our hearts and we cry great, are you Lord? In all of your glory, we sing great. Great. Are you Lord? Oh, hallelujah. Great are you, Lord God. Great are you, Lord. Yes. Great are you, Lord. Great are you.
nobody great nobody great nobody greater than you nobody can hear more and more 
take over till we are consumed by nothing, nothing. impartation before we go just lift your hands in the presence of God for the sake of time we won't go through and lay hands on everybody that's the beauty about glory so father we pray that you truly take over now God we are so grateful and so humbled by the grace you have placed on this people now God we stretch our hands toward those that have come we stretch our hands and we say father arise upon your people every church represented here arise we pray, Father God, that we not move to the place that we have stars in the pulpit and stars on the praise team, but let the glory fill the house. We pray, God, that the result of the corporate worship is a corporate glory. Glory that fills the entire house. God, we cry out that when these dear ones go back to their houses of worship, that there is tremendous change. Tremendous change. That there will be vehicles of glory. For that worship leader that's here, that is frustrated because there's not the free flow of worship. But there's not a climate in the house for the worship team to just flow and do the things that they would have experienced in other houses. God, give wisdom to that dear one. Give strength, God, and give anointing. That in those 10 minutes allotted, that the glory of the Lord will be released upon them. Cause them not to be like Eve to see what she doesn't have but rather to appreciate that that she has cause her not to be distracted say what about that but, in, but to celebrate those 10 minutes those 15 moments I pray Father God that your fire would fall in that moment cause an eruption to take place in that house that the man and the woman of God will be able to declare what that says the Lord to the house so release that anointing now friends let's stretch our hands out towards them God release that anointing there it is there it is I felt it there it is there it is there it is all over this house there it is dancers, singers, poets, trauma teams, whatever area of ministry, fine arts ministry. Let the wind blow on them now, and I thank you. Yes, sir, it's getting heavy. I got to shut this down. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Glory to God. We bless you for that anointing. Cause healings to manifest in palms of victory as the people worship. Cause chains to drop to the ground as the people worship. Cause members of the team to clean their hands. 
to purify their hearts to get their souls in alignment to your purpose and will to get their tongues in order to know the things that they can and cannot say cause this entire body of believers not to do this but to live this to become this that worship not being a lot of time in a service but worship becomes a way of life I pray father for them to come into their being so now we bless your name for what you're releasing right now for shift that's taken place for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory <laughs> forever and ever. Amen and amen. It is so. Release a worship right there and just thank God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What key you in? D flat? Go to D flat for me. We'll leave it on this. We'll leave it on this time to go. We gotta go. Precious Jesus, how I love, how I live, how my voice with your praise. <laughs> I implore you, trench my heart as my lips part your grave. By this great gospel, by this great gospel, oh my, 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 my. forever. forever. Let's sing it one time, real big, and then we're going home. Come on, lift your voice and say, I am. I
of you. I pray the presence of God go with you to cover you as you go out of this place. You got to get home to get some rest and worship tomorrow. And so we can hold our mule because I feel something. We're going to get about it here, let you get home. Have an awesome night tonight. Be safe tonight. Be covered tonight. Got a report back. The young man we prayed for last night with the stab, who was stabbed last night, um, miraculously punctured his lungs. There was a man of God that was on his way to church. And for some reason, he the Lord told him to turn around. He turned around. It come to happen, this man of God is also a paramedic that caught him in the road. I was able to, 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 to minister, administer to him um, until the ambulance got there. And we thank God we got a report back that the boy is on the ward, not even in ICU. Glory be to God. So we thank God is good. God is good. God is good. Um, I am, um, for the group, um, I, I sent something in. It's a testimony. I can't, I can't tell you nothing, right? This is a secret. So I can't give you no details. But they'll know the details. I sent out a proposal this morning, right before I came to the concert. There was an office I was going. I wasn't praying only because I was sending the letter off. And uh, I got a response back while you was worshiping and said approved. Glory to God. Y'all don't even know why y'all sounding, but boy, listen here. You know we talk about shouting now. That's the spot. That's the spot right there for that shout. <laughs> yeah, so we thank God. We ain't said enough for that. Oh. Um, um. With the gang that's just bumped. God bless you. Have a good night. See you all next year for the next workshop. God bless you.
that he hath done. His wonder is the Lord of all creation, and if you didn't know, let me tell you, it's going to be all the way live. We got plenty to drink yet, <laughs> but it's a brand new one. Now the guest of honor is both lion and lamb. I used to be so broken, lost, empty. A heart with no beat, a singer with no song to sing. So I know the feeling, the silence is deafening. But in your pain lies a blessing, a sweet and sour victory. So keep walking, 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 though it seems so far. No matter who you are, see there's one. 